Welcome to the InfoWars Nightly News. It is Tuesday, January 5th, 2016, and I'm Leanne McAdoo. Here's what's coming up tonight. Tonight. We're also taking steps to make the background check system more efficient. Obama says that more background checks are needed. Meanwhile, the FBI reports that 23 million were conducted in 2015. Then, Senator Harry Reid wants to use slush fund money for his own personal retirement. After that, the latest on the conflict in Oregon. And, do you question the government? You could be diagnosed with oppositional defiant disorder. That's next. And then you can protect your head from the sun so you don't get... Uh, See how fast I did that? Folks, I'm an expert. <laughs> Every day when I leave work, I do this. Let's do a wide shot, guys. People can see the full power. <laughs> so you might as well drink some, uh, some BPA water while you're at it. Then you can go ahead and do a detox and start cleaning yourself out. Clean, pure drinking water. You can't survive without it. But where do you get it? Alexa Pure Pro is a brand new groundbreaking gravity-fed water filtration system that is like no other. The Alexa Pure Pro transforms water from virtually any fresh source into clean, healthy drinking water, pairing the unprecedented super filtration power of an all-new gravity block core with a hybrid chromatic shell. It removes up to 99.999% of impurities, including bacteria, viruses, fluoride, disinfectants, volatile organic contaminants and hormones filter capacity up to 5,000 gallons stainless steel construction easy assembly low maintenance replacement filters are simple to install and now as part of an exclusive limited time introductory offer you can save $20 off the retail price and get free shipping this is a limited time offer so order your unit today and receive free shipping and $20 off go to infowarsstore.com or call 888-253-3139 Hitler took the guns. Stalin took the guns. Mao took the guns. Fidel okay. Castro took the guns. Hugo Chavez took the guns. And I'm here to tell you, 1776 will commence again if you try to take our firearms. Doesn't matter how many lemmings you get out there on the street begging for them to have their guns taken. We will not relinquish them. Do you understand? Well, the great gun grab is here. President Obama gave an Oscar-worthy performance today while he was trying to rally support for his executive actions on gun control. Now, the Drudge Report titled it Tears for Fears. I think it's more like tears of a clown. And from high schoolers at Columbine, and, and from first graders in Newtown, first graders, And from every family who, who never imagined that their loved one would be taken from our lives by a bullet from a gun. Every time I think about those kids, it gets me mad. And by the way, it happens on the streets of Chicago every day. So you gotta love how the president has to pause for effect and stare right into the camera as he wipes his tear away. It's, it's all, you know, easily taken seriously there. But of course, this is all to prepare everyone for the days leading up to his State of the Union address where he's going to lay out all the big issues uh, facing the union and what he prepares to do with the remainder of his time in office. And of course, this is at a time when less than 2% of the American people consider gun control to be an issue. Less than 2%. The majority of Americans, rightly so, are concerned with terrorism and the economy. But here is how Obama plans to unilaterally curb your Second Amendment rights. Now, the White House press office published a fact sheet describing the executive actions that the president intends to sign. They cover four areas, expanding the background check system, increasing the role of the ATF, increasing the reporting and treatment of mental health disorders, and promoting smart gun technology. Now, this is, of course, something that's already been going on. 
and they're just gonna now increase it, things that haven't been working in, in their mind, but they're just gonna keep on throwing money at these programs that don't work. Now, Breitbart points out five outrageous facts about Obama's executive gun control. They say, hello, the main policy would not have stopped any recent mass shootings. The last 15 mass killers all passed background checks to acquire firearms. This is something that we point out regularly, but you know what, facts don't matter. They're going to get their long-awaited uh, national registry. Now, they also point out that this is going to undo 225 years of precedent, destroyed without any legislative due process. Uh, the expansion of background checks is an affront to freedom in general. Uh, they say private sellers under the purview of the government, regardless of whether those sellers sell one gun a year or 100, they're going to now be affected by this. Americans have been selling guns privately since 1791. Now with a swipe of his pen, Obama is saying a portion of those sales must be handled federally and conducted via background checks. Also, you can be denied a gun for purely financial reasons or if you are on social security, like if you are needing someone to manage your affairs. Now, if you'll recall about seven months ago, I interviewed the oldest living World War II veteran, Richard Overton. He was about to turn 109 years old. He told Josh and I a little story about how, you know, yeah, he has someone who manages his affairs for him, but every once in a while, he goes out on his patio, cleans his gun, just to let the uh, sketchier elements in the neighborhood know that he's still he's still with it and he is still packing. So, you know, now Mr. Overton, who fought in World War II, he's going to be under this new rule where he can get his gun taken away. Now, Breitbart also says it's going to add more burdens to gun dealers who are already following the law. Contrary to these mainstream media reports, they're already highly regulated. This is just going to add one more loophole for them to jump through. And then, of course, they're wanting to spend tax dollars on smart guns that nobody wants. They point out how to date the biometric readers raise concerns that they'll fail to read the correct palm or fingerprint if it's caked with blood. So obviously that means it's useless for self-defense. And smart guns paired with watches or bracelets, um, you know, someone could steal that watch or bracelet, of course, and along with the gun, they'd outsmart those. And, you know, you, you're hearing a lot of stories about how a, a young kid is able to use his father's gun to stop a home intruder or, you know, a stay at home mom as well, having to protect herself and her children. Maybe she has her husband's gun there. So it has all sorts of problems. But let's not forget that this is not some new plan the president has concocted. This has been going on for quite some time. Vice President Biden and I had um, a meeting with a group of technology people and talked about how um, guns can be made more safe by making them either through fingerprint identification, um, the gun talks to a, a bracelet or something that you might wear, um, how guns can be used only by the person who is uh, lawfully in um, possession of, of the weapon. So it's, it's those kinds of things that I think we want to try to um, explore so that we can make sure that people have the ability to enjoy their Second Amendment rights while at the same time decreasing the um, misuse of, um, of weapons that lead to uh, the kinds of things that we see on a daily basis, you know, where people, kids and kids especially, um, are, are struck down by... Um, sure. No, no, one, no one wants that to occur. So let's just go ahead and point out where Obama's priorities are when it comes to expanding the role of the ATF. Now, according to a White House fact sheet, uh, the president plans to deploy 200 more Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosive Agents to help enforce the gun laws. He also plans to add at least 230 new FBI agents to pour over the backgrounds of gun buyers. Now, guess how many agents are being sent to fight ISIS? 50. So clearly the real enemy is law-abiding citizens here in the U.S. This, I will reiterate, is at a time when the majority of Americans are more concerned with terrorism, our open borders, and of course the economy. But, you know, he's going to put all this effort into getting this gun control. That's going to be his, his big cap off here um, as he is finally getting out of office. Now let's look at this rule allowing doctors to turn over gun patients who they deem are mentally unfit. So, of course, the government can strip them of their rights. Now, this is the argument that people use time and again. And, of course, nobody wants some mentally unstable person having access to a gun. 
but let's go ahead and take a closer look. Now, this also would mean that Americans critical of the government could have their Second Amendment rights restricted if psychologists diagnose them with oppositional defiant disorder, ODD. We've talked about this last year. Uh, it's um, op oppositional defiant disorder is a recurrent pattern of negativistic, defiant, disobedient, and hostile behavior toward authority figures. It typically begins at a young age, but can survive into adulthood. Now think of how many students out there right now are afflicted with this problem. Additionally, Americans with alternative views could be labeled crazy and have their guns taken. So this could be preppers, people who complain about corruption, and uh, they've already previously been deemed mentally defective. So what about you know posting about government corruption on Facebook? I know I do that plenty. Um, you can be involuntarily detained for psychiatric questioning, just like former Marine Brandon Raub was in 2012. And earlier that same year, David Sarti, he is one of the participants in the National Geographic Channel's Doomsday Prepper Show. He visited his doctor complaining of chest pains, only to have the doctor later commit him to a psychiatric ward and alert authorities. Sarti was then subsequently declared mentally defective, and he was put on an FBI list that stripped him of his Second Amendment rights. So as you can see, the mental health aspects of Obama's sweeping gun control regulations are general. Anything can fall under that. And this is what we've been warning you about for years. This great gun grab is here. And that's what we need to stand up against. Because if you give them just an ounce of your freedom, they're going to take it all. They're just waiting for this moment of weakness. And of course, he has been using this time and again with his crocodile tears. Now, coming up later in the show, Jakari Jackson and David Knight are going to uh, break down Obama's theatrical performance, as well as bring in some facts to his fiction. And then, of course, we're going to be uh, checking in with Joe Biggs. He's on the ground there in Oregon. He's got another report coming back from behind the militia lines. As well, we are going to be hearing from InfoWars investigative journalist Wayne Madsen. Um, he's going to tell you about the top things that George Soros has his eyes on for 2016. And from every family who who never imagined that their loved one would be taken from our lives by a bullet from a gun. Obama's dictatorial national policy strategy is forming into what can only be described as a global government coordinated subterfuge of the language of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. It wasn't the first time I had to talk to the nation in response to a mass shooting, nor would it be the last. Fort Hood, Binghamton, Aurora, Oak Creek, Newtown, the Navy Yard, Santa Barbara, Charleston, San Bernardino. Notice how he mentioned Fort Hood and San Bernardino. Those were actually jihads, not mass shootings by the mentally ill or even proven workplace violence. So it stands to reason if a small percentage of mass shootings are already jihads, you better believe Americans are gonna need to be packing heat. Of course, this is only the beginning of the propaganda on parade. Here's a reminder, a little known decades old anti-propaganda law known as the Smith-Munt Act was silently deep sixed on July 2nd of 2013. Essentially, unlimited government propaganda can now be unleashed to control the seething grievances of the American people. So what is it that Obama is selling this time? Nothing less than an affront to the absolute law of the land. A huge swath of Social Security beneficiaries will become ineligible to own a firearm to protect themselves, as Obama nonchalantly placed that into the mental health aspects of Obama's